Tears of the Kingdom is fast approaching and the internet is rife with theories, story theories, who the villains are gonna be, gameplay theories. So we've decided to combine all those and squish them into one video. Here it is, every Tears of the Kingdom theory that matters. <laughs> Nice, yeah. So we'll start with the most obvious theory that I think most people are talking about, and that is the tears, right? These little like tear-shaped beads that were shown at several points throughout the trailer, and presumably they are the tears of the kingdom. And we all know that Nintendo did not want to reveal the name of this game too early because it would ruin gameplay mechanics. So the leading theory is that the whole plot of this game is you going out and collecting these tears for the new champions. Mm -hmm. That's what we're gonna call them, the new champions. So we have a shot of the Gerudo lady and Sidon. Mm -hmm. Sorry Gerudo lady, I forget your name. <laughs> and also the little bird guy, forget the name of his species. They all have a tear. Seemingly they're all like powered up because they're charging towards something in that shot. Who knows? Who knows really? And the only champion that wasn't in the trailer was the Goron champion. Mm, that's a little bit sus. We've actually even got an official artwork of all the others. Not the little Goron guy, which is a shame. Goron's my favorite, man. Mm. I love Gorons. Maybe it has something to do with the story. Maybe the main plot is to collect all of these tears, which kind of links back to what I said in the previous video about the medallions that were surrounding the mysterious figure. The pictures inside of them look exactly like the tears. Mm -hmm. You know who also has a tear in the trailer, Laura? Ganondorf. Ganondorf does have a tear in this trailer. Now, whether that means Ganondorf just had his own tear, he's racing to collect the tears before Link, we do not know. But the current leading theory is that he's stolen the Gorons one. Yeah, that's why he's not pictured with all of the other champions Ex with his tier. Exactly. They showed Goron guy without his tier, Ganon with one. It gets a bit obvious. Mm. So that is the leading theory at the moment. There is another theory about Ganondorf's tier though. That's my personal favorite Tears of the Kingdom theory. <laughs> So it's basically about Ganondorf's redemption arc. Mm-hmm. Ganondorf is not a villain in this game. He is going to be your homeboy, G-Dog Ganondorf. <laughs> going to throw down with Link. That would be really cool. It would be really cool. I 100% agree. And I do think it's possible. Ganondorf has been the antagonist for this long. Wouldn't it just throw a massive spanner in the whole fandom? Boom, he's on your team all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, it would definitely be revolutionary for sure. So people kind of think that that might be the case because of his character art. People are like, he doesn't look evil. People he think looks... he looks sexy, actually. <laughs> he does look like a cool samurai guy. Yeah, and I will come back to art a little bit later on for another theory. But it's basically evil people look evil. Mm -hmm. Good guys look good. Does, if that makes sense. Mm. It's usually pretty obvious in media who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. So the reason that people are thinking that it might be Ganondorf's redemption arc is that he, Link and Zelda might all be working together to finally break the cycle of birth and rebirth that mm. they keep going through. Finally put an end to it. Demise, Hylia, the hero, all being reincarnated through every game in the Zelda series. Maybe they're trying to finally break that. And it looks like Ganondorf might have worked with the Zonai at some stage in the past. Are the Zonai even good? Well, that's kind of the theory. There are connections with Ganondorf and the Zonai in Breath of the Wild. So you get this Phantom Ganon armor set. All of those pieces are found in the Farron region around Zonai ruins. Mm. Also the, um, what is it called? What is it called? What is it called? The, bar the Barbarian set is like found in all of the ancient Zonai labyrinths in those shrines. And it has this like red hair 
coming out of it. It's like maybe it's a hint towards Ganondorf. So Ganondorf is always shown with lovely red locks. Maybe they were in cahoots. Now, this leads us on to our next section, villains. I don't think the Zonai are necessarily the good guys. They could have just been trying to lock Ganondorf's armor away and they are actually good. Maybe they're a villainous tribe. Mm. We are not sure yet. We know nothing about the Zonai. But this character here is rumored to be of Zonai origin and he doesn't look very nice. He's definitely got a bit of a scowl. He, this leads back to what I was saying about good guys look good, bad guys look bad. He just looks evil. I don't think anybody can look at this and be like, oh, he's definitely a good guy. He, he looks evil. It's true. He does look brooding. And we really know nothing about this. I was going to say person, but I guess like- I'm Dinosaur like, man. Dinosaur man. We know nothing- Dinosaur woman. Okay. Nothing about the dinosaur man slash dinosaur woman at all. So mm. really, they could be evil. Or they could be good because there is a shot here of- what is most likely this dino dude talking to Zelda. So whether that's him trying to help Zelda or whether he's trying to manipulate Zelda, we do not know yet. Perhaps she has been imprisoned. She doesn't look very happy. True. <laughs> Maybe he's just full of wise advice though. Yeah. Who knows? True. Maybe he's like a sage, but it's definitely a race that we've never seen before in any of the Zelda games. So chances are it could be a Zonai. A fan favorite theory is that this game will be the return of Demise. Nintendo obviously wanted us to play a Skyward Sword before we played this game. Mm -hmm. So there is some kind of connection there. Sky Islands, they're the most obvious. But Demise, the beginning of this whole cycle of birth, rebirth, the master sword is broken. The sword that seals the evil. Mm -hmm. This shot here is very demise -y. Very demise -y. Or is it just Ganondorf going Super Saiyan and powering up? It could be like a Ganondorf Super Saiyan, but I would put money on the fact that Demise has been released from the Master Sword when that was destroyed. Maybe Demise is like taken over Ganon, you know? You see this shot, it almost looks like he's struggling against the power and below the struggling Ganondorf, if, if he is, there's like these water lilies and they do symbolize rebirth. So maybe Ganondorf is like being overtaken by Demise and he's like, no nah, man. Just let me live my life, dude. I've been beaten by Link and his damn sword so many times before. I'm over it. Yeah, just gee, get out of me. <laughs> and that goes back to the Ganondorf redemption theory. Yes, yeah. It also leads into, who the hell is this person? Well, we think it's Hylia. The internet thinks it's the goddess Hylia. You know, Demise, V Hylia. <laughs> She's wearing basically exactly the same outfit that Zelda is wearing yes. throughout the trailer. So again, is this just a Super Saiyan version of Zelda, like an alternate form? Hylia is like coming out of Zelda. It's not mm -hmm. actually a separate like being. a possession. Yes, yeah, a possession form. That's mm. exactly it. So whether it's completely different character, whether it's Zelda possessed, whether it's Hylia incarnate. Who knows yet? One of those three is bound to be right there. Yeah. And I cannot wait to find out. She does like Kamehameha wave, so... Just quickly, we're going to throw in another Skyward Sword comparison or mm -hmm. two. Are we going to see a return of Fee? Many people think so, just because they're Master in Skyward Sword. Sword. Yep, Master Sword broken. Is Fee broken now? Fee wasn't very well received when Skyward Sword came out. So I'm not convinced on that. It is just floating about. So we thought we'd mention it. One of the things that we were wondering about is where are the Sky Islands, right? Like, in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, in Breath of the Wild, because they certainly weren't there then. One suggestion is that it could be the cloud barrier that they used from Skyward Sword to hide those Sky Islands. Which was put in place by the goddess Hylia. So the goddess Hylia no longer has her power because she has come to Earth, Hylia incarnate, 
the cloud barrier has been broken, the sky islands are now visible. Mm. The dragons in Breath of the Wild just kind of spawn out of nowhere in the sky, kind of like a portal to get through the cloud barrier, perhaps. Maybe they live like in the Sky Island place and they just came down to Breath of the Wild every now and then to fly around off of their scales. So I know we're all thinking about it. Time travel. It's been brought up so many times when talking about Tears of the Kingdom. And there are several things that do kind of lean into that theory. The first one that I have already mentioned in our past video as well, is that I think that there is gonna be time travel because in the first and maybe second trailer as well, the music's going backwards. That just can't mean nothing. They wouldn't make it go backwards for no reason. I always I mean, thought they that- they can, but- <laughs> I mean, they could, but why would you you know it, it's got to it's going to mean something and this is also the point where we see zelda falling down a hole a wormhole Ooh. to an <laughs> alternate time do, 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 do. <laughs> when she falls down um something in her hand is like glowing yellow people are suggesting it might be the tear mm -hmm. maybe the tear takes her back to another time because it like senses the danger she's in or something maybe it's her like hylia powers that transport her back there but people think that that's when it happens people are leaning into the fact that zelda is in a different time in this latest trailer we've gotten especially because she's asking link to find her and she's just kind of hanging out. Yeah, right. She's just like on this platform that we see Link on later. It's nice. There's there's no malice anywhere. She's just like, hey, I'm, I'm chilling here in this nice, beautiful kingdom. Yeah. Why wouldn't he be able to find her? Exactly. Because she's in an alternate dimension. Do, 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 do. <laughs> now, this could also link back to Age of Calamity, the incredible Hyrule Warriors game. Definitely check that out if you haven't already. In that game, we go back in time and we actually stop the calamity from happening in the first place. Did that cause like a branching timeline to happen? Exactly. Is it like DBZ where Future Trunks just goes back to his timeline and the androids are still there? Or is it more akin to, uh, I don't know, that Tomorrow War movie with Chris Pratt where he comes back and like kills the aliens and then the aliens never invaded in the first place. Now there is one more time theory. Zelda is stuck in this alternate timeline. We've established that in the theory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are we going to be able to play as her in that timeline? The theory says, Yes, we are. That would be epic. That does mean Nintendo is going to have to build a whole nother map of Hyrule or like with the Sky Islands and with the potential underground area we get to talk about. That's like potentially six different maps. Huge maps. So I don't think so. I love the theory, but I kind of just don't see how it would be possible to do that. If they were able to do that, I think everybody's minds would be absolutely blown. <laughs> I would love to play as Zelda, yeah. even if it's just some linear story that we see her going through at the mm -hmm. same time as Link in this super open world. Maybe that's where Nintendo does tell the majority of the story. We just explore as Link in the Tears of the Kingdom world and we flash over to Zelda's timeline that she is apparently stuck in mm -hmm. and we play as her through these more linear sections, yeah. like levels almost, yeah. which then may influence Link's experience in yeah. the Tears of the Kingdom world. She seems to be dropping little hints for Link. Yeah, leaving him little clues. Mm. Like the platform that she's sitting at when she's asking Link to find her, you see Link at that same platform later on mm. and there's this like glowing yellow orb, mm. the same color as her tear. So maybe she's like left him a little present there's or something. something there. Maybe they can interact with one another through mm. the timelines. And I think it would be okay if we had little linear levels of Zelda dropping these clues. I yeah. think it would be fantastic and a good way for Nintendo to tell the story. Mm. Because if Breath of the Wild had anything wrong with it it's that its story was not quite there yeah there wasn't much story yeah it did make it more open because anytime you introduce a story into a game it's definitely going to make 
it more linear mm -hmm. because you know a story has a beginning and a middle and an mm, end. Yes, exactly. So I think if we were to break that up, that's going to be absolutely perfect. Yeah. But as with all these theories, time will tell. <laughs> that was a good one. Did you just come up with that just then? Yeah, I did actually. Nice. Was it? Yeah, that yeah, was good. It was a bit cringe. Gameplay theories, my favorite theories, because this is what we're going to actually be doing <laughs> in the game. Do you prefer the dungeons of the old Zelda games or do you prefer the shrines of Breath of the Wild? That's a tough question. <laughs> I love... Uh, uh, Don't think about it, just answer. Shrines. Ooh. Breath of the Wild was my favorite game of all time. So. It's okay, you don't have to explain but why. But I love the dungeons, so if there was dungeons, it would be the perfect game. A lot of people miss the dungeons. That is a, a common gripe with Breath of the Wild, is that it was dungeonless. <laughs> I think the Divine Beasts were dungeons, but apparently that's not everyone's opinion. Hot take. It's not, they're the dungeons. They Anyways. were, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have dungeons back in Tears of the Kingdom. That's it. That's the whole theory. There's like not a whole lot of evidence to back this up, but I think just people want it. There was that entrance in the first trailer. Everyone was like, dungeon, but I don't know. It's just an entrance it's to just a an, temple. It could be the entrance to anywhere. But there is a return to more varying boss fights. Yes. that's Like right. we saw this giant golem guy come out of a wall which could be inside of a dungeon. Mm -hmm. But there is also boss fights that happen in the overworld, like Link and Birdman guy. Rito. Rito. Hey, I just remembered. Rito guy sailing down into this tornado where this weird bug thing comes out of. That's clearly in the overworld. This three-headed dragon is clearly in the overworld also. They look more like big bosses rather than like the mini bosses that there were in Breath of the Wild, like the Hinox mm. and Igneo Talus and things like that. They were kind of like mini boss fights, but they weren't really bosses, were no. they? I guess the closest thing was the side quest where you had to save the dragon from the malice, but it was a nice dragon, so it wasn't a boss fight. Exactly, mm. yeah. There's also a lot of theory swirling around about how there could possibly be a whole underground map that we can explore in Tears of the Kingdom. Now we did see this little section of gameplay, presumably inside Death, Death Mountain, because lava. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> is this a dungeon? Maybe. Or is it a section of this whole underground map? Yeah. Now we're going to dive quickly into the section of leaks rather than theories because apparently there was a leak that showed the Z axis at a value of negative 150 or something like that, mm. which does mean underground. Yeah. So why would you bother putting a whole axis there if it was just one dungeon. You wouldn't have a whole nother axis for just one dungeon, no, surely. And not. Zelda falls underground. Exactly. So maybe the Sky Islands aren't the only new addition to the Hyrule map here. I just wonder how the Switch is going to handle that because that's going to be like three different maps essentially. Like that is crazy. And they're all going to be interconnected yeah. seamlessly. There's also some theories about being able to possibly explore underwater because there are several animations of Link using his powers to float up through the rocks. It looks like he's swimming. And you see him sort of like in a bubble thing later on where he's also swimming. So if there's animations of Link swimming, why not let him swim? Mm -hmm. if let the explore, guy swim. If you can explore underground, you should be able to explore underwater. I agree. And the final gameplay theory, the final theory we have for you in general might be the most controversial, I want to say. It's definitely the most loose theory yeah. we've got there is going to be some form of multiplayer people are taking this shot here as evidence honestly it's probably link just rounding up a bunch of allies for a random fight or a random cutscene. but hey i'm hopeful if pokemon can do it poorly but they did it 
<laughs> then there's no reason Nintendo can't do it with Zelda. And hey, mm. I would absolutely adore that. There is two of us here at some kind of gaming after all. If they're gonna do it, they should at least make Zelda a playable character, right? Everybody's <sighs> been saying it for, since the beginning. I would love Zelda as a playable character. Me too, me too. Like with all theories, they are just theories. The game isn't out yet. We don't know what's gonna happen in the game until it does come out. But these are our personal favorite things. I do hope that we see at least some of these things happen because I've gotten myself all hyped up about them. Yeah, I know. I'm just like, oh my God, this game is gonna be incredible. <laughs> yeah. It is gonna be incredible though. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. We will be doing a absolute buttload of Tears of the Kingdom content, mm -hmm. both before and after the game comes out. So subscribe, make sure you see those. Despite the title of this video, I'm sure we don't have all the theories covered here. So if there's something we missed, something that you think is super important or just super fun and out there, drop it in the comments below. We would love to hear all your wild outlandish theories. <laughs> I'm Tom. This is Laura, and till next time, uh, time. <laughs> I didn't even notice that one. We'll catch you later. Bye. Bye.